Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in as we are coming to you live from the Aramith Simona Serena here at the Sheridan No Fork Waterside Hotel yet once again, coming to you with a Pat Fleming Productions, the 2022 International Open. Thank you all for coming out here. It's been year after year with a wonderful, wonderful event, and thank you for tuning in at home. We couldn't have done it without you and all of your support as well as our three title sponsors, as always, Diamond Billiard Products, Aramith Balls, and Simona's Cloth. Without further ado, let me introduce our next two, final, our next two players in this 10-ball Bigfoot Challenge. One Pocket has concluded. We're getting down to the end of day one in the 10-foot, the 10-ball Bigfoot Challenge. First off, coming to us from Russia, he is a Derby City Classic all-around champion, world nine-ball champion, the 2022 U.S. Open 10-ball champion, sponsored by Q-Tech, Diamond, and Hex.com. It's Fedor Gorst. <laughs> and his opponent, coming to us from Spain. He's a World Cup of Pool Master champion, and master, two-time World Pool Masters champion, the 2022 European Moscone Cup team member once again, sponsored by Predator, Ecotisa, and DS Billiards, it's El Malador, David Alcaide. <laughs> Gentlemen, you may now approach the table and lag for first break. At this time, I'd like to send it up to the booth to our two commentators, Mr. John Schmidt and Mark Wilson. Take it away, gentlemen. Hello and welcome everybody. I love pool and 10 ball on the 10 foot table and this figures to be a spirited competition. It's just yesterday, David Alcady was selected for the European Moscone Cup team over Fatter Korst. I don't think there's any hard feelings, but I do figure that this is gonna be a hotly contested match. John Schmidt is with us tonight. John, any opening thoughts? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, they've got to put that aside just being picked yesterday for the Moscone Cup and trying to validate that or anything but you told me something interesting a minute ago that Feder, Feder grew up playing on a 5 by 10 diamond and diamond in Moscow for most of his pool life and I didn't know that so honestly I think that gives him a pretty good edge because David's going to play on this table like once a year and Feder grew up on it so yeah we'll see how that plays out since Federer's played this event, uh, the Bigfoot here in the U.S., since he was 18. Wow. And he would play the match and win, and then he would sit in the stands and watch another match on his phone while watching live the match afterward. I mean, he's in the pool like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. He's a serious guy. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and Al Katie's a great shot maker. Oh, yeah, they're both incredible players. I mean, just, just sees who see who gets the rolls and how the balls cooperate off the break. They're both capable of uh, beating each other. And we'll see how it unfolds race to 11 alternate the break no jump cues if anybody just uh, you know was tuning in earlier and saw the match right before this you can see the difficulty of this table it plays much harder than you might think at home and it can break you down mentally if you if you let it uh, get to you and then on top of that pool is hard yeah and pool is really hard on you know playing against the best players in the world for big money in front of crowds and cameras and then you throw in this table and it's a recipe for looking real bad if you get weak it's a good test for pros oh it sure is i mean had albin just literally shaking his head after that yeah. I mean, he won the match and it looked like he just got run over by a truck he's completely confused he goes i cannot believe how hard that table is to play on after being on the nine footer for a few days and a nine foot diamond's plenty tough i'd like to have a dollar for every ball i've missed on those and then you move to this thing and uh, hang on. He got broke down. He got broke down just a little yep. bit mentally. You know, you can see the table had him whipped. Mm -hmm. And that can happen in golf, too. When you get to one of those pro tournament oh. courses and they're <laughs> set up just heinous. It, yeah, hard greens, high rough, little breeze. Johnny Miller telling you you suck on NBC. I mean, you got all kind of problems. Uh, he's going to have. Okay, first Pretty chance good. to duck. Yep. Yeah, nice Pretty shot. good job. You kind of like just banking the one up to the four and staying behind the six three ten. Yeah, see I think that's you see no, anything better I, than that. I think that looks excellent. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if the speed will let you get up there, but you want right. to be sure that you do introduce the ten ball. You don't want to yes. get out there between the gap between the ten and the two with the uh -huh. cue ball. Uh huh. 
So you don't have to go all the way to the four. I think you can if you hit it. Yeah. Yeah, even just getting yeah. it just up maybe past the side. You might put a little right English on the cue ball to put the brakes on the cue ball and get enough energy to get the one up to his left pinky finger here. Good point. Yeah. It looks like he's just going to use draw, I think. Hmm. Kill it. So he didn't want to get all uh, the way. He didn't want to okay. take a chance to move Nothing it that wrong far. wrong with that. Yeah, we're not using jump cue, so like this is a pretty nice little safety. And in case we were, Gorst happens to be one oh. of the best with the jump cue. Yeah. <laughs> But you and I both feel the same way. We don't really like it. If you can jump no. your full cue, good enough. No. But if you got to go to a toy, we're not all about that. Yeah. Well, I don't. I think he can mass say around this six a little bit. And he's going to hope to push the six, I mean the one, up past the side and have the cue ball come across near the eight. Oh, he just missed clipping it. So first advantage goes to David. Tough run out, of course, but as a pro player, this is all you can hope for, ball in hand to get started. Tell you another thing, I really love Gore's attitude and his uh, oh, yeah. general disposition. He He's never uh, uh, real negative or uh, egotistical. No. He's just a matter of fact, kind of a little robot. Right. Well, you're the nicest guy I ever met in pool. I can only imagine if you were winning like 42 events a year, number one on oh. the money list, making 300,000 right. a year like right. Fedor. Like you, you'd, you'd have just been walking around with your clothes off like, I'm above the law. Yeah, exactly. like, I'm Ernie McCracken. You'd think I was Bill Murray for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have the crazy air. You'd think, I know. Is that Ken or Mark? Oh, how do you hit it? <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice shot right there. Uh, I didn't even, I couldn't tell if the three goes. It clearly does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. David Alcady has uh, Sanchez Ruiz in his corner, sitting right behind his table. Their best pals mm -hmm. from Spain. And they both made the Moscone Cup. Like, wow. And they both play great. Oh, of course. Yep. They play, like, real fast, loose, happy. Um, mm -hmm. They're perfect gentlemen, nicest guys. I mean, it's hard not to pull for them. Super firepower. And, and oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're really good for the sport. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, very engaging and friendly with the fans, which is all you can ask for as a sponsor or um, a tournament promoter. You, you love having guys like them at the tournament. Yeah, he's got a chance to uh, win the first game, which is big. And with Fedor, you just know I'm going to have to play great. Mm -hmm. You have to take. I mean, you advantage. have that sense with Fedor, like you're not. You're going to have to play great just to have a 50-50 chance. Nice shot. Everything's relative, though. What we would call great on this table is, you know, there's going to be some balls missed. I would suspect on this thing. I I have very little experience on a five by ten mark. You own a table, a tough five by ten, so I really got a clue the last set how difficult these five by tens can play playing rotation pool. I mean, because they really were used for straight pull, half table shots, shorter shots. Now you're playing rotation, spinning the rock up and down the table. Yeah. I mean, four and a half inch pockets. Uh, you know, it's right it's right on the borderline of so difficult that you can't go any more difficult, then you almost lose what you're trying oh, to do. I and, completely you know, agree. Yeah. But this is a more of a real test for pro skills. That's yeah. why I love it. It's not yeah. just a break and run out festival. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a much more complete game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great run out that Dave, Dave, David made there. Made it look easy. And you got to realize, I mean, he's coming off the nine footers for the last two or three days. Oh, yeah. And just comes right to the 10 footer, hit one rack, and he's already like looks adjusted. That's amazing to me because I played on your table for two days and felt completely lost on it, you know? It finally started kind of looking halfway right, but the first six hours, oh, just didn't even look, look right. Gorse just to the right of the center of the table. 
Playing the two in the side. Oh, two short. Everything kind of just did the four oh, ball. Four ball went. Okay. Well, I don't really see much to get started. There was a time when I was uh, co-captain with uh, Allison Fisher on the Atlantic Challenge Cup team, which is like the Junior mm -hmm. Moscone Cup team. And I remember that. <laughs> The team that Europe put together oh. had Gorst and uh, Wichter. Uh, I know. Who, right? I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> and we got some kid that won an APA regional. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like, yeah. okay. Yeah, they're like 750 Fargos at 16 years old on Team Russia. Team, Yeah, it was, <laughs> that was pretty scary. But it showed our kids what's possible and what they're capable of and what it's supposed to look like. Look at this little shot. If it goes, he's got a shot. What a man. What a nice shot. It was. And if he missed it, David's hooked. Yeah, Joey Tate was part of that team. Oh, he's was still he? playing. Okay, so, yeah. Joey's yeah. out there on the floor right now playing. Uh, Shane uh, Wolford was on that yep. team. No, that's a very good player. Yep, he's really evolved, both mm -hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Tough little shot here. You just baby this in. You can't really do much with the cue ball, can you? Yeah, you just baby it in. Oh, very good shot. At that time when uh, Peter was just 18 and winning matches on the Bigfoot at the Derby, I said to him, I go, how do you get this way? You know, because he's such yeah. a young guy, and you're in there with the likes of Pagula mm -hmm. and Shane Van Boning. He goes, oh, Northern Europe, we have a, a juniors tour with a, oh, more than 100 kids monthly wow. and and he didn't say this in a bragging sense he said there were six other kids that would be world champions not talking oh, yeah. about himself right he, man oh yeah and they practice really inspiring. yeah they practice yeah they practice hard i mean you got rustling and chinnikov and oh man i could go on and on with all the it, there's eight or ten more I'm thinking of the Russian players that play great. Stalov. Yeah, yeah, I played Stalov 20 years ago in Alabama, and um, my backer smartly says, if you can't beat this guy, you ought to go get a job at the Waffle House. I said, Ricky, this guy's incredible. He's he's winning tournaments all over the country. And, <laughs> Two eggs over uh, me. We, we, bro we, we broke even after about 20 hours, and, and he's still telling me, like, I can't believe you didn't rob that guy. I'm like, Ricky. Mm. Slow down. One of the best players <laughs> in the world. Oh, oh good shot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I you grew up on a 5x10 diamond. Like, what kind of an edge would that be? It would make you know? a difference for sure. I mean, Federer's thinking, I wish every tournament was on this table. Absolutely. Of course, we would all have to get one of these and adjust and play. But, I mean, for most of us, this table is just completely foreign. The patterns, the shot selection, all of it. The other difficulty, really, if you have any uh, fundamental idiosyncrasies that are not mm -hmm. very good, it gets mm -hmm. really exposed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're flinching and twitching and decelerating and moving, you're screwed. And watch Fatter how, I mean, he mm -hmm. gets through every ball, still as a statue. Right. And that's a byproduct of growing up on this table. This table will force all of that out of you. Yeah, nothing but respect uh, and admiration for his game. Oh, yeah. And not to be a little oh. Al Katie's either. Oh, I, no, I he's a world, the world leader. To him. Yeah, of course. My goodness. Yeah, they're both incredible. Everybody in this is incredible. Yeah. And you're going to see, you know, a guy or two have a bad set or things aren't going, but they're all just world-class players for sure. This run all started with that real soft rolling bank. Remember that? That uh, yes. just reached yes. the pocket. Yes. With a very nice clear up after that. Score is tied at one game apiece. <laughs> Win or lose, too, Gorst has no emotion whatsoever. No. Nope. He's, he's just, a, he's totally all about it. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, he. To me, he doesn't even look at each match. It's, it's like it's all just one big connected match over 20 years. You just every set, every game, every rack, every ball, just try your best. And when the dust settles, see how many trophies you've raised over the next couple decades. Yeah. I mean, he, he just plays each match like 
just going to work and just do my thing. Well, he was forbidden from playing in a lot of the big yeah. events this yeah, year and right. still was like the money winner of the year. Yeah, I mean, that's know, pretty so. scary. <laughs> and and he won like every tournament he played in. Good center break for Al Katie. Five ball, seven ball, found the pocket. Is he going to get a shot? He does. Well, you know, I've told a lot of younger players, that, I mean, to be a great pro player, it, a lot of it is how you treat people. Because, like, Fedor is a great guy and everybody likes him. And, and that's garnered him help from, like, the Sword Brothers, a couple good guys. You know, they sponsor him and they... They, and he stays with them, and that's because Federer's a good person. And right. So good things happen for you, and doors open for you. Because just running out, there's a lot of guys that can do that. But if you treat people bad, then people avoid you, and, it, and it'll stifle your career. But, uh, you know, Fedor is just doing everything right, treating people like he wants to be treated, like the old saying goes. And, uh, and uh, you know, he's just going to win a million tournaments, make a million friends. Life's good. Well, and he demonstrates the work ethic. Yeah, well, know, that, that too. That, that's yes. often lacking. You yeah, know, that's he's right. He's diligent. Yeah. This is a tough one. I don't think he can draw Man, into the no, two. If I you like, have to go up and down, oh, that's just murder. 20 feet of travel with the cue ball. Look and not hit anything. And not hit the 10. Yes. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. really tough. I mean, good shot. Just but unfortunate. So hard. Hmm. What do you do here, Marcus? Well, yeah. I mean, if you flick flick off the right side of the two, I mean, it's going to come over by the left pocket. You could come down and try to lay right on top of the nine ten, but I mean, he could even play the two at the. T I like coming I off the right the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I like coming off the right side of the two down Safe. on top of them, just like this, just like this. Well, you can't hit that ball though. That changes things. You can't do that. Better still on the wrong side of this two to get on the three. Yeah, a lot awkward. of right. awkward. A lot of work left here. Hard to work the cue ball close. Right. But I, he'd like to be close he'd if like, he has to play the combo. Yeah, and I, I kind of think here you just you just draw over into the six to, to make your your make percentage. Oh, and you're elevated, so yeah, don't spin it with inside. Just try to make the two and shoot the three nine combination. The nine's just off the rail. Very good shot. So we call this a big ball, but it's not quite like a big ball, but the nine the nine should go if you hit it soft. And then the 10 traps the three. I like his chances here, although difficult. If anybody can handle it, it's this monster here. Well, he's pretty tall, isn't he? Yes, he is, yeah. I never really, th I mean, he looks like he's probably 6'2"-ish. I don't think he's that tall. Maybe 6'1"? Yeah, but he's. Like a Johnny Archer height? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he has the straightest backswing. Oh, yeah. I just beautiful. love it. Yeah, beautiful. Uh -oh. oh, just uh -oh. miss hit it a little bit. He's human. Yeah. He's human. He does not have a good golf swing. I, I, I did <laughs> notice that. It looked like an octopus <laughs> falling out of a tree. But uh, we still love him. <laughs> right. We still love him. That's a Gary McCord line. I think he, he was the first one to say that. Or David Faraday or something. No, he'd be, I tell you what, he's built to hit a golf ball. I mean, if he wanted to be good at golf, uh, I wouldn't bet against him. Got away from mm -hmm. him. Yeah, trying to stay behind the 10-9. And he's going to find himself in a bad spot. I kind of like him knocking the three down behind the 10-9, two rails with the cue ball up behind the six. Nice shot. Oh, it might get right behind the six. Yeah. Really, Fedor? Fedor? It's Fedor. That's how he likes it pronounced, right, Mark? Fedor? I'm almost certain that yes. that's how he likes it pronounced, yeah. <laughs> Sound like, I sounded like my kid when I asked him if he's doing his homework. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Fedor, Fedor with the cheddar. <laughs> yeah, it's Fedor. That's right. I should know that. A guy wins 40 tournaments a year. I can't even pronounce his name correctly. Nice shot. Going to avoid the scratch. I got a kid. I got a rail for sure. So. Well, this is as tough as it gets. But the problem with this is, even if you manage to make it, your cue ball is going to kind of like hit the eight to stop there. But uh, you really don't have much else. 
Boy, this is straight as a I mean, string. There's, right. There's no manipulating the three. No, the cue ball's not going to do much. You're going to lay on the rail. Mm -hmm. this, and that's all there is to it. Oh, he played a safety. That's how difficult it was. The, the, yeah. the, one of the greatest players on earth chose to not shoot it. Interesting. Yeah. And But see, he's played enough on a 5 by 10 to, like, kind of picture what's manageable. Well, the 9 you and know? the 10 were both right. going to be problems. You know? so right. if, if you can't get away from the rail, you yeah. just dig in your own grave. Yeah, and whatever Fedor, Fedor chooses to do, I'm going to say is the right shot. I mean, he knew something I did in there. I, I knew shooting it down the corner was going to be super tough. Now look at this. Think this is easy? That's a pretty nice uh -oh. shot to get an angle here. I mean, it's doable, but boy, you got a really hit a heck of a shot. No, for sure. Oh. But uh, Al Katy is a great, oh, great, he's a shot great maker. player. Yeah. Oh, he's spinning this too, man. That adds difficulty. Ooh, a little chunky. That stroke yeah. did not look confident. No. Yeah. no. But like you said, you just hopped yeah. off of a nine-foot yeah. table, and now you're here, and it looks yeah. like an aircraft yeah. carrier with yeah. deck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep, an aircraft carrier with pockets. Nice shot. Wants to just get off the rail here. Gonna elevate here. This shot looks routine. It's far from routine. There's a little angle and a little elevation. And you see how much care he put into that. No, oh, he's respectful yeah. of every shot. Yeah, these top players make tough shots look routine. That wasn't routine. Well, and they pay attention to the That's routine right. shots. Uh, they, right, and they make those look super routine. Yeah, they never miss them hardly. Shot here, draw back six, eight inches, maybe a foot. Probably just put the cue ball right back where it is if he can. One, two, three, come to a little pause, smooth back swing. Beautiful. Chance to go ahead, two, one. Nice out. Yeah, the first time I watched him play is uh, about five, six years ago. He was 17 years old in the Bigfoot Challenge at the Derby and mowing people down. And I just thought, like, wow, this guy. Yeah. I said, he's 17 and beating, like, you know, just everybody. Wow. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the big threats in this event is Shaw. Jason's comfortable on this table. He plays with that extension. He can reach his shots. He's... Uh, you know, he's just comfortable with the long cue. Uh, I think Kachi would be dangerous with his height. I mean, because you can reach stuff. So, um, and they shoot so straight. But um, I think Fedor might have more experience on a 5 by 10 than anybody in this field. Well, Josh Filler, too. You can't discount Oh, him. yeah. No, of course. Uh, means I'm JL little, Chang. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, I mean, think of, yeah, I mean, God. <laughs> yeah. There's another couple of assassins. JL Chang. Yep, I saw him in Kaohsiung, Taiwan 20 years ago, and I knew then. I was like, wow, this guy. Nine in the side. Five's going to, no, he's okay. I don't know if he can get to the left side. Of that. Yeah, he can hit the left side of the one. It was not a horrible break, but no, that was not the best that no, Gorse does either. He no. missed hit him just a little bit. Just a smidge. Now, see, like, like this is a perfect example of having some experience. You could try to cut the one in and get on the two, but guess what else you could do? You could bank the one, stop your cue ball right there. If the bank goes, you're dressed up on the, the two in the side. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even I think the two's blocking the bank lane just a smidge. Uh, he just went for the safe. Well, nothing wrong with that. Pretty heady. Yeah, I like that. Boy. And he just, he can, you know, 
a, a newbie there might try to cut the one and run into traffic and all that. Not him. He's too smart. Can I give Al Qaeda open looks no. at the table? You've got to pin him down whenever that's possible, right. make him earn his opportunities because he's so good. He makes his own opportunities. Oh, that's if you right. help him at yeah, all, yeah, you don't need to give him any extra. It'll snowball in mm -hmm. a hurry. Mm -hmm. I love that he plays fast too. I really like watching the fast players, even really just for the fans at home. You know, people that are slow players, it's just brutal. Oh, nice shot! Great return. God, you couldn't ask for anything. Now, this this kick here, I mean, always spooks me. You come off the left side of the one, you can scratch, and off the right side of the one, you can scratch. The scratch is big. You almost have to hit the ball right in the face to not scratch. You can also scratch off the top of it, go to the side rail, and back over to the top left-hand corner. So um, a lot going on with this kick. Do you like kind of a softer speed mark where you take the scratch out of play, maybe just kind yeah, of like I, drive the one down to the end rail and up a foot or two, and, you know, you're we, not going to go at it hard, We used right? to slug them. Uh -huh, nowadays, right. oh. these guys pace them and, you know, yes. just to, and try to lay the one over on the right side rail or something, right. you know, just, yep. just minimize, make sure you hit the ball. Yeah. Well, he's winding up like he's going to use He looks pace. like he's going two rails to me. Oh, no, one rail. So he did go about? with the pace. Oh, and he got safe, too. Well, not safe, but kind of. I'll tell you what, I think you're supposed to, to bank the one upstream and stay down there below the six. You don't shoot at this, do you? Would you shoot at this and try to go all the way back to the other end for the two on the side? It's poor line. I mean, because that's, you, it's doable, right? Well, if you can shoot, you can't just mouse around right. with the likes of course. No. Too. Yeah, you know, if you figure if you overcut it, you're okay. No, he's ducking. Well, I can't tell. He's using low outside. Wow, that's... Wow, look at all the swerve he had to factor in there to make that. Such a tough shot. He's shooting basically a seven-foot Mass A shot. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's what it is. You're shooting a little Mass A from seven feet to a little tiny pocket that's a mile away. Have to, he might have to go rail first here. No, he mass eight. Oh, and just nudged it in. What a shot. Yes. Got pretty good on the two. Tough, but, but doable. Close enough he can mm -hmm. control himself here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to play offense if he doesn't like it. Looking to see if it goes. Must go. He doesn't really have any detractors, probably the most well-liked player in the sport, but even if he had one hater on the planet, he could the guy couldn't say he's not a great player, you know? Yeah. There's no arguing that. And he works hard every day oh, to become yeah, a better player. Hard. It's not just yeah. what he is, it's yeah. what he's oh, shooting yeah. to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he wrote me a message a few months ago that said, hey, John, do you want to play like a, a set of one pocket for 10000 I'm like, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, let me think about it. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said, I said that there's 7 billion people on the planet. I think I could find somebody easier than you. But I do like, you know, if I'm going to play a money match, I like playing people that are complete gentlemen, which he would be, which, you know, which would be the only. <laughs> I still would avoid him, though, like, uh, <laughs> like, like, like COVID. I mean, he's he's uh, he's just too good. He's too good. I'm on, the, I'm on the senior tour out here with my walker. You know, there's there's some 50 year olds out there I might take a peek at, but uh, 
This guy here, I think you leave him alone. Now he needs to get on this eight with some angle to get back down to the 10. I mean, you can't just slap the seven in and get straight in down there. He's got a spot he's really trying to land on. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now a high right cue ball and go two rails and come right down and shoot the 10 to the bottom right pocket. I would think. I, I mean, he can do it several ways, but I, if this, especially if this eight's frozen, I think you'd have to hit it with the inside. But again, I'm not the five by ten guy. He might be. He yeah, might just he come might just one go straight rail high, right, straight top spin. right, because spinning your ball is well. Okay, he did. Okay, he did. okay. okay. Yeah. So I guess That's it still smooth. applies. Yeah, it still applies. But this table, I think there's times you come down with center ball one rail instead of twisting the cue ball and all that stuff, and you'd have a better sense of that than me. Well, he sure hit that nice. Whatever he did there, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go with whatever he chose. Three to one. It's played perfect so far. Clearly looks very at home on the 5x10. Oh, yeah. He doesn't look oh, intimidated one iota. Nope. That's a huge momentum thing, too. If Let's say Fetter wins this. Now, how do you like drawing him tomorrow, the next day in the nine ball? You know, he's just pocketed yeah. a cool 20000 and played on And then he gets to come over here to what looks like a bar table. To him. You know, and <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a big momentum thing. Pool is, you know, like like FSR right now, winning the U.S. Open and being picked for the Moscone Cup. And then he gets up there and plays Mika today, and he's just running around the table. I mean, just zooming with confidence and in momentum. And Mika can't get anything to go right. And it's pool is a lot momentum. Yeah, Mika did not get many no, breaks in he that didn't match. Get, he didn't, did he? up a little bit off it, tried a little different speed. Um, luckily for David, the five's blocking the one. I guess you could you could bank the one, but it looks like a kiss maybe. Yeah. Looks looks like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. forget that Gorse did win the yeah. bank pool tournament at the Derby this yeah. year, <laughs> as well as the one pocket. Yeah. He's acting like maybe that one goes by the five. Hmm. Wow. Oh, really? Wow. Better? Combo? I mean, from there, <laughs> from that range? Yeah. Guy in the front row smartly claps. Yeah. What a shot yeah, that was. That was ridiculous. Boy, that really puts heat on your opponent, too, because oh. when he sees you confidently firing balls like well, that. And then it makes me think, like, when a combo comes up for me, like, I'm supposed to shoot it, you know? Yeah. And I'm, like, not sure I'm supposed to shoot that. Yeah, my buddy's wearing my buddy uh, Damien Pompanic's um, clothing line, jam up apparel, and uh, I have a lot of it, too. I think it's the... <laughs> the the best clothing line in pool, I really do. And uh, yeah, Fetter looks real nice in that shirt. It's a cool looking shirt. He always dresses real sharp. Always the consummate professional. Acts right, dresses right, plays right. Now he's gonna have to come out Two rails around the eight, maybe. Uh, he could just touch this in softly and take yeah, the I shot right there. You kind of like do. that? I think that's what he's yeah. going to do. He can't go on long range. No, just, okay. I think he might have overran his mark one or two inches there. This will work. Yeah, this is fine. I think he can follow to the in rail and up. Look at the transition from the nine to the ten. You have to really hit a good shot to move that cue ball 10 feet. 
You can't just get anywhere. Can't you just get straight in? You think he'll accept an angle on the seven or come back over and get straight in? I oh, think well, that angles that. Yeah, yeah, I was say that answers that. Easier. Yeah, that answers that. No sense drawing when Yeah. You now you like two rails with bottom left and shoot the eight in the side where he's standing? It, yeah. I right? Doesn't that look about right? No, he's, he's staying in the center oh, to play the oh, eight in the corner. Oh, wow, really? Well, oh, I was going to say, sorry. man, I'm going to that side. I'm chicken. <laughs> yeah, now he needs to get good on the nine. This is where if you haven't played much on a 10-footer, right. right? Right. See, I think, okay, and I'm probably going to be wrong here. Right. I like an angle and going three rails with a follow ball to the 10 in the bottom left corner. Is that what you're sensing here? Well, I'm just sensing don't get where you have yeah. to draw. That's what right, I'm okay, saying. so yeah. you're trying to avoid the long straight draw shot, right. Some kind of angle. Because you can't get close yep. to the cue ball because right. you can't reach you it. You can't so reach you. it, right. Yes. See, see how he's going to the center of the table. Yes, yes. Yeah, now your shot, mm -hmm. three rails around. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I mean, he's got to hit this fantastic. High speed, a bunch of left, a little bit of follow, and uh, very missable. Yeah, here's a ball, one diamond from the pocket, oh. and he's four feet away, and it's a very oh, missable very shot. Oh, very missable, because you got to move the cue ball like like 15 feet here. Every bit of that. Yeah. Wow, and, and the ball stutter step going in. He yeah, hit it great. he didn't he hit, hit it. it great, but I mean, it, that, yeah. Look at how hard he had to hit that. I don't know about you, but I just I try to I try to feel the high facing here. I want to just overcut this a smidge, and then the contact English kind of yeah, just mm -hmm. like that. Like when it when you first strike it, it, you feel like you've overcut it, and then it's just right, it goes right center pocket. Yeah, yeah if you, you aim for the that, center of the pocket, yeah, you're gonna rub the bottom rail right. a lot of times, huh? And it's soft. If you hit it soft, yes. then it's when it bounces up. Yes, you yes. kind of have to have that little bit firmer than just the softest speed. Yeah, that's right. To avoid that. Now, was that from Fetter's break, or is it uh, whose break mm, is it? Do you recall? I really can't remember. I thought Let's David see. broke him kind of soft there. I really don't remember how Fetter even got started, but that was a great run out. He made that combination that Oh, ridiculous yeah. guy. Look at this. Look at his uh, 923 TPA. <laughs> it's probably his far go to. <laughs> Good square hit. Oh, man. Got ball action. Oh, God. Look is he going to get a shot breaks. here? Yeah. Yes, he is. I mean, really? Made two balls. Wow, the two connects to the five. Ooh. Well, the six sevens kind of tight quarters, but uh, as difficult as this table plays, this is this is about as you know as good as you could hope for after the break. Oh, I'm yeah, I mean sure you still have to do a ton, right? Right, right but at least it's s doable. Right. You know. Yeah, I'm sure he's delighted to have a chance yeah, like this. Yeah, right.
he just going to stay in the center here? Schmitty? You know, he's I think he's going to the rail and getting a little closer to the five. So the five six transition is is. Yeah. Oh well, how you about see this? how straight that was? How though? about that shot, boy? But boy, that was dangerous. You're Looked right. Like, I mean, it just barely cleared he, the point. Well, so. he saw the value of really getting close to the five, and it was worth all that. Mm -hmm. That was nice. That tells you though how tough that to get mm -hmm. position was. Mm hmm. Oh, he's just putting on a total clinic so far. Okay, okay, now he's gonna have to come around three rails for the seven where he's standing. So even just a little routine shot like this, this right. requires some high left English, and the cue ball is going to move about nine feet. And here on the overhead, you can see how far that is. Yeah. It's, it's imminently missable. Oh, and missable, and your position play can get away from you. I mean, but normal people yeah, they don't realize no, that this is the this so is the essence of the five by ten yes. right here. This embodies it. That's a lot right. more travel. A lot more travel. You have to accept longer shots, bigger cuts. I mean, it's it's tough. Three rails to the center of the table. Mm -hmm. we need a little bit of left hand English. And he hit it. Well, he did too. Getting tight by the seven allowed him to get pretty straight mm -hmm. in. That's right. And that was good execution there. Now, here's a perfect, here's a where I, I could see getting a little confused for me. Now, do you, okay, he is going to come up. He, he wouldn't try to play the eight and the nine on the side. No, oh, I think right. he would. He yeah. could sometimes. I think he will this time. Yeah. Oh, you think so? Yes, it looks like he is. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, he confused me. Cause, okay. But that was an either or. It's no, not like it's you would never play it in the side on a 5 by 10 He's still oh, going to do yeah, it plenty. Yeah. yeah. he execute Lord yeah. of mercy isn't it, isn't it something though now Albin and him for all intents and purposes are like the same level right absolutely and look at the, the way level. Albin played but then he has played on a 5 by 10 his whole life look how he's playing isn't that something well Albin, I mean you know last right? year on this table was it Albin that got second yeah he, did he played win like it? perfect on it you know? did he win but anyway yeah he didn't play a set like he just did you know he well, I mean, and I think Alvin would be the first to admit. I mean, that was like the worst set of pull I've ever seen him play. Now, yeah. but that's because of this 5x10, and he even said, I've been on the 9-footer a few days, and I just moved right over to the 10-footer, and I'm helpless. And Fedor just has so much 5x10 in his memory banks that he looks comfortable out there. Mm -hmm. He's making this table look like a normal table. and it. I mean, this is the equivalent of going to Beth Page Black and just shooting like 65 like it's mm -hmm. just a normal course, no, right? you know. Yeah, he's, uh, he's something. He is something else. You're looking at one of the most gifted players on earth right here. Well, David, too. I mean, uh, but, yeah, but Federer is just playing player. ridiculous right now. Nice solid hit. Just missed making the four and a side. Well, it's that side spin on the cue ball took yes. away a half a mile an hour it, of it, velocity that could have yeah. made the difference, though. So. Yeah, it does something. It just just messes up the break enough. But when you hit them hard, mm -hmm. it, and then square, you have then a then longer it, swing, shoo. and then the likelihood that you get a micro dot left or right. That's right. That's right. you got to train like a beast to hit like uh -huh. these guys do. Is he – can he – I mean – well, I don't know what he's going to do. He's looking at the 210. I was going to say, does he have enough angle to slam over for the 210? I guess he, he does. That's what glanced at. I don't know. And watch how still he'll hold even though he fires this. Bam. Oh, he didn't get there. No. He didn't get there. No. This, this is no longer a go shot. No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, he's looking at it, Mark. He's looking at it. Wow, I can't believe he's shooting this. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. If you, I mean, he's, well, he's now if you could, well, if you could pass the seven with the cue ball and put it down the end rail behind the orange or something, but not to, like, just draw your cue ball over because the two is going to stay kind of there on this end of the table. 
Man, you're seeing the ball's good when you even attempt this. <laughs> Unless he feels that the two is going to move out to the right off the 10 safely against the long rail like it's a free shot. And I think that's, yes, that's, yes, that's what he's seeing. I mean, really? Wow. You see what I'm saying? Wow. What How's a shot. It hitting what a shot. 6-1. We're going to take a player timeout here. This course is off like a freight train. Yeah, just playing ridiculous. Let's see if Fetter raises up like Shane Van Boning does right as he's hitting. Eh, not so much. Oh boy, good square God, hit there. Think. Look at that break. Another possible break and run out. Not, not easy, of course, but a doable. He's giving himself opportunities hitting the break that good. Yeah. So you like you like coming down between the four two or do you think he can slow this cue ball down? I think down, he's gonna maybe? slow it down, yeah. Okay, so just trickle it in with a smidge of left maybe to put the brakes on the cue ball and gear affect the one in a little bit. I think he, he looks like he's queuing up to go up and down to me. Nope, you know, nope. Oh almost well, overcut it. He almost overcut over Wow, he was able to slow it down easy. See I'm just so not familiar with this table that shots and angles I can't understand what the cue ball is going to do. That didn't even look possible to slow that down to me. It was easily uh, doable. We don't have the right angle. That's I, I true. can tell I from mean, where yeah, I'm sitting yeah, that's I true. thought he could okay, do it. Okay, that's true. Yeah, he slowed that down like no problem. He even overcut it. Slightly. Right, right. That's, uh, that's another break and run out possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not quite conceded. No, know. yeah. not Yeah, I, I don't like the commentators that are like, oh, he's out from here. Right. Uh, David just rack them up then. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, he's and, make and like they could run out for right, sure, you know, right. Like no, I concede that one to myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Hey, who was it yesterday? They were talking about pictures of uh, from way back in Johnson oh. City, and it was oh. handsome Danny Jones. And yeah. somebody said, "There's a guy that gave himself his own nickname." <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> handsome, <laughs> handsome Josh Man, yeah. handsome Mark Wilson. Yeah. We're all here. Yeah. <laughs> Just come two rails out here. Yeah, I think Don't he wants to preserve in. the angle. Yeah, yeah, get a little angle. Come I on almost around. like, do you like the angle to go around the eight? I do. And then three yeah. rails around, like. Oh, well, no, he's going to go one okay, rail. Okay, one he's rail now. One. I guess because the seven's so close to the pocket, uh, he doesn't need to. Uh, yeah, he doesn't need to. That. He can over just top spin. Right, don't over-engineer it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly Sometimes what I get a little carried were, away. Yeah, we're, we're talking yeah. about complicated routes, but you can just go follow. Yeah. And that's a, simplicity is your friend on the five by ten. I can promise you that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Oh, no, perfect. Yeah, two speed. rails perfect right down. Speed, Cue yeah. ball's gonna hit right about where his left leg is. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone can see that. But the oh, bottom yeah. line is, it's gonna hit right about the second, second diamond, diamond over here, yeah. maybe just a little beneath that. Yeah. 
You'll protect it. The reason you want to go two rails here is because you want to take that scratch you out. Get of there. that scratch out of play completely. That's right. Perfect. Beautiful. Once it releases, releases from the rail, you're golden. It's making this table look like a bar table. Well, this will be a second break and run out of the set right here. As he expands his lead, seven games to one. Another great player using Talm V10 chalk. There's a lot of people here using yes, it. Uh, yes, uh, the greatest players in the world have figured out that it doesn't get all over the cloth and the balls keeps them slick, keeps them clean, keeps everything plain, consistent. Makes the cloth and the balls last longer because there's not an abrasive agent all over everything. Oh, no, wow. look at that. A Just nine a 951. 51. 58 a balls pocketed. Three errors, Smitty. Yeah, that's. I make insane. three errors in the first rack of oh, nine yeah. balls. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, this is just gross. Well, that's exceptional. Yeah, you know, that's, that's exceptional. I always Even say at the world class. You know, yeah, world I always class say that. Level. It's world class pool. No, this is better than no, world class. No, this pool, is way better. Yeah, I mean, an, eight, an 850 is like world class pool, but this is otherworldly. It's not something you practice up it, to do. This has yeah. to be your lifestyle. Yes. You know, I mean, you, it's yeah. not like, oh, I practice six hours yeah. a day or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, an all consuming thing mentally, physically, to, to play pool at this level. Uh, now, but don't get me wrong, Al Katie plays like this too. Definitely. I mean, so does, you know, Alvin everybody Alshin, in this everybody in this tournament. Yeah, is there's phenomenal. nobody in this yeah. field that's, that can't play a yeah. set like yeah, this. Yeah, that's right. I see it every year. Uh, Shaw play a set like this or Al Qaeda, and it's just mind blowing. Because if you ever get a chance to play on a diamond five by ten, you know you'll really appreciate what you're seeing here. I don't know. I think my high run playing straight pull on this table right here, if you gave me the rest of my life, would be like a hundred and forty or something. <laughs> I mean, really. It looks fantastic. Well, I, I, <laughs> what you I talking mean, about. I guess, but it, it just, I mean, you know, then you move me down to a nine-footer, and it's just a whole different animal. So I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot harder. This is so typical of how it goes. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, you he, break, no right, shot. Right. Now mean, you got to try to uh, clatter into balls, yeah. get safe. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> no way to run out. Nope. And Fedor will probably, Fedor will probably lag this right in the side and run out on you or something. What I what I like about Fedor's game is he, he doesn't do anything around or at the table to be instigatory. He doesn't like. You know, he doesn't do anything to rile up his opponent. You ever notice that? He just, you know, there's mannerisms and things you can do and you can complain and throw your mm -hmm. hands and all that. He doesn't do any of that. And he just, um, no. And you can't get mad at him. He plays perfect and he's a perfect gentleman to play. You don't hear him over there muttering under his breath and slamming his fist or anything. He's, uh, you know, he's what I wish I could be when I play. But, man, I'll tell you, look at that. It just lags that in. Wow, pretty shot. Now he'll probably... Watch this, Marcus. This is going to be unbelievable. I think he's going to go deep into the corner, two rails out, just miss the seven, Ooh. and shoot the three in the bottom left-hand corner. Is that available, you think? Uh -uh. No, no, it's I not. Think, I think he's going to dig down and draw oh. Oh, over wow. and back. Oh, wow. But that would either be way. stronger. Well, if he goes into the corner, that seven is enormous. I, You'd have to get so tight to that corner pocket, you I, can't risk it, I don't I, think. I think, I think he that's digs. what he's going to try to do. He looks like he's coming yeah. right out of that corner to me. No, you called it. What the hell am I talking about? I'm a bar table player. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that didn't even look available to me to draw that to that three. Well, the, mm -hmm. To get by the seven over shot. there, you have to be right next to the corner pocket. You can yeah. do it, but from up where the, it was so far up the table. Yeah. But man, and, and, and look at what the two shots he comes with to get started. The, the great lag mm -hmm. in the side, the super strike with bottom left. Now he's elevated, punching around perfectly. Well, just a smidge short. Well, we're not going to criticize this. No, I mean, he's yeah. Made two. <laughs> Unbelievable yeah. shots. And he's still going to get out. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's yeah. not. It's, it's just he's <laughs> going to drive the five to the rail and out, I think. I think he can kind of push the five into the rail and out. 
You know, there's nice nobody shot. beating down a path to his door to play oh, for money. Oh, no, he's you know easy that? to find. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's even a bounty. You yeah. Know, you can wrangle somebody in no. there to play. He's got a special for the month of November. He yeah. gives everybody half their money back yeah. to play him. Flies you there first class to play him. <laughs> yeah. It'd be kind of fun to right. He had it when he shakes hands with the guy in a match. He just looks at you and goes, "I must break you," <laughs> like, <laughs> like Drago said. <laughs> or if he dies, he dies. I played him once in the Derby, the first round, the one pocket. And I had my red, white, and blue shorts on, and he had his like Russia jacket on. It was kind of funny. <laughs> we kind of had a little laugh. He does have a kind of a funny laugh. Oh, too. yeah. Just a, I don't know, just a light giggle uh -huh. or so. Yeah, he is just put on an absolute rotation clinic. And to do it on this table, I, I don't really even know how to gauge it. It's like um, maybe one of the finest performances I've ever witnessed on a pool table, you know, overall. I mean, he has not made a mistake yet, really. I know those three errors, I'm not even really sure what, right, what they were. Right, I can't remember. Yeah, exactly. Probably nothing. Yeah. He probably, Pat thought his bridge wasn't proper uh -huh. or something, gave him a foul. <laughs> I'm going to have to get like a 40 by 80 table at home with two inch pockets or do something. I mean, this is like him playing on one of these his whole life. I just think his confidence on it, he knows he can play like this. And like me and the other, I mean, even for me, I have no idea what I could play like on this table, good, bad, or indifferent. And he knows. He knows what he's capable of and he expects it. And I think, I think in fairness to David, he's kind of wondering, like, well, what do I play like on a 5 yeah. 10 I don't know. Let's yeah, find out. right, right. Exactly. Is that, you know what I mean? We haven't got to see David at all. No, no. I mean, he's not playing bad. He's no. not getting any turns. No, he's not. Gorst was playing 953, but that's gone up. Yeah. You know, I oh, mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's creeping up on that 1400 number. <laughs> yeah, he's really played uh, amazing. 8 to 1 was our score. Absolutely. The tough thing about tournament play, though, is you don't carry any yardage into the next no. match. I mean, Federer can play like this and, and win 11-1, let's say, and the next match lose 11-10, done, gone. I mean, it's the damnedest thing when you're playing tournaments. You can win like 11-0, 11-1, 11-1, and then lose 11-10. See ya. But that's, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, if you play good enough to oh, win 11-1. Yeah, you, usually, don't, yeah. Don't yeah. worry about it. The, yeah, don't sweat the, the it. The occasional 11-10 yeah. will happen, but yeah. there's going to be plenty of good things. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Ball right in the side, one down by the corner. Oh, man. Well, he, he's going to have to take a big angle on the two. Um, he wants to land right between the eight and the, the side pocket. Got to make a nice little spinner on the one, land right there. Wow. Kind of like a straight pull break shot. Well, that's all well and good, but you're saying he's going to come in between the eight mm -hmm. and the side pocket or around the eight? I, uh, yeah, like he's, yeah, he's going to land right where he put his hand. So, I, no, what I mean oh, is, oh, I think he's going to go between he, the eight and the side right, pocket. Right, right. Yeah, not around the eight ball. Right, okay, right, right, exactly. Boy, that's a delicate shot. And, it, yeah. you know, it depends on how you hit the corner pocket, too, whether you get it or not, uh -huh. because you can go right into the side pocket. Oh, there. yeah. If you overcut this flight, like, oh, you're going to be feeling good. It's the right shot. I'm not saying it isn't. Oh, you hit Look it first. Right? Just, I mean, beautiful. within a millimeter oh, of where goodness. he's trying to get. Right. All right. Yeah. Pat should definitely take away one of those three errors he had for that good <laughs> shot. <laughs> that's how I do it. Uh -huh. I judge on the curve. Oh, I mean, yeah. I see a guy always wipe off something. That oh, he did yeah. Maybe a hint wrong earlier. You know what, though? The TPA, Pat administers it completely fairly, and that's yeah. really all that matters oh, is that sure. it's the same for everybody, and then we get the same measurement. But for me, I always throw a little subjectivity in the mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, dang, he's playing good. I got to give him a break. Give him an extra point or two. Exactly. Look how pure he hit that ball. Yeah. 
And that's why his speed control is so good because he's pocketing so purely. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. hit the pocket a little rough, that changes everything. That changes your angle, everything. Your speed. He extracts maximum value on every shot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He gets that little extra couple inches a little bit closer mm -hmm. on angle. Yeah. So he can just smooth everything. Kind of like Jim Rippey said to me one time. We were talking about around 100 balls. He goes, how many times uh, a rack do you think you shoot an 80% shot? And I was thinking about it. And I was thinking 80% mm. is good. And I said, mm. well, every rack. You know, I mean, that's yeah. good. He goes, well, most you ever run is like 56. Right. You <laughs> can't just keep throwing 80%ers in there. Right. Yeah. I, but I never thought about it like that. Yeah. I'm thinking it's a high percentage. Yeah. Meanwhile, one out of five, you're going to miss. Yeah. That's how that's it got to right. 80%. Yeah, that's right. Well, now he can he can punch to the side rail, get right in the middle of the table, draw out two rails off the six for the seven on the side, and another possible break and run out by one of the most talented players who've ever walked the earth, for, plain and simple. And I know all the pros have played sets like this, but, man, Fedor sprinkles these kind of sets in there a lot, doesn't he, on camera? Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he yes, does. Yes, he does. <laughs> I am a huge fan, and it's just yeah. ever since I've known him. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that has respect for the sport, interest in the sport, willingness to work, I mean, everything that you well, name. And, and, and to have the foresight when he was a kid to get a 5 by 10 diamond, I would have never even thought of trying to do that. Like, I'd been like, why? I mean, Well, I don't think he got I, it. I think oh. because I don't think it's available in Moscow. Oh. I think it, it just happened to be at the oh, pool room, and that's what he generally... Okay. Yeah, he gravitated to, right, obviously, and right. figured, you know, I can always go down to the smaller table. I mean, and I, I could be wrong about uh -huh. this, but when I talked to Jeremy about it, he said there was a 5x10 at the main place. Oh, okay. So. And he said that that was where Fetter practiced every day. Yeah. But anyway, whether he did or didn't, it looks like he did. Isn't it something, though, to see him play like this compared to the set we just watched a minute ago? Yet, all three of those players involved are about the same level. Oh, yeah. Now, you think pool's not between the ears? Third break and run out of the set here for Gorsh. God, it feels like he's done it seven times or something. <laughs> yeah. Wow, my boy. A 963 TPA on a 5 by 10 Give me a break. Give me a break. He'd probably run that many points. Seventy-seven bowl. balls pocketed, three errors. Yeah, yeah, that's just uh, incredible. Yep. There's the rack track. Now, KD won game number one, but then it's been all gorst ever since. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, all Al, Al K can do is 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 try his best and. Um, Use this as a springboard maybe into the nine ball tournament. Um, even if you lose this set, get to put a few more racks under your belt and build confidence. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. Uh, He's not giving up at all. No, no heck no. I, well, I've seen players go from looking unbeatable and then just, like I was telling Jeremy, one of the craziest sets i ever seen was like 04 in Vegas, alternate break 10 ball, race to 11. Hopkins is up 10-0. I think you were commentating. Up 10-0 on Efren, alternate break. Efren wins 11 in a row to win Hill Hill. I yeah. could not believe it. That was nine ball, though. Oh, I thought it was 10 ball. No. Oh, okay, see, I'm getting old. And I knew it was something crazy, though. Uh, Am I right, though? It was like 10 yeah. in a row and then Hopkins 10 in a row? Be exactly right. Okay, exactly. okay, and wow. I saw Alan coming down the hallway the next day, and I didn't say a word because oh, I know he's oh. heard about it all night long. Oh, man. You know it's never happened ever before. Well, I never him. seen nothing like that. Not alternate break. I mean, I mean, even winter break would be right. insane, but not alternate break nine ball. See, the nine ball story makes it even more crazy. Yeah. You know, like, but oh, man, fantastic. Anyway, yeah, I've seen it all. Yeah, I was there too. But I'll tell you what, you know, the youngsters, they don't know, but I've seen Rempe, Varner, Hopkins, you. I've seen all those guys from that era play sets that look like this. Look at you this can, shot. Yeah, look I know. How do you hit it? How'd he hit it? Oh, my goodness. That was so pure. Yeah, I'm not saying he was just making the ball. Ridiculous. I'm saying to know the path that Kubo's going to take to get yes. yourself a shot and then hit the speed. 
Uh -huh. That is precision. Tell you what, he's going to have to do a lot to get on this three. He's got to go right with high right English, right up between the six, seven. So he has to spin this with quite a bit of right to get underneath the seven. I think I don't see another route. Or do you see anything else? That's no. what he's doing, isn't he? Oh, it'd be so pretty yeah, if he hits this yeah, good. Yeah. You've got to really You've have got a to really feel. twirl it. Oh, oh, he did oh, something different. Does the, oh, well, much better. And look at how he hit it. Damn, much near perfect. Better. Almost perfect. It's gonna. <laughs> well, it is perfect, really. Yes. I think he might have been playing for the side, though. Well, either way. Wow, whatever. It, yeah. He probably knew that this was yes, available yes. with that route, but it's such a smooth delivery. Mm -hmm. That cue, that transition, Schmitty. Mm -hmm. My goodness, if we could get your transition to look oh, like this. Oh, man, I'll tell you. Imagine. I could have won two games this set against him. <laughs> yes, you could have, at least. He just hits the heart of the pocket every single time. There's no just like, ah, oh, take a little holiday uh -huh. and rattle this one uh -huh. in. It takes tremendous mental uh, stamina to do this. Yeah, it does. Bec you know, because you think, well, couldn't he just let up mentally? No. Nah, when you have a perfect set going, it's like throwing a no-hitter. You want to finish off, play great. Um, you've got something amazing in the works here, and you don't want to let up. Well, to do this, you've never let up. Yeah. You can't just all yeah. of a sudden say, oh, I turned it on. Yeah, It's not exactly. like that. You, you do this every day. It's yeah. Like Allison Fisher and Nick Farner, do you think they just mm. practice sloppy at nope. home or something? The half ass nope. No way. Oh, nope, that's right. No, I have to say the Sword Brothers were onto something when they uh, – garnered this guy because uh -huh. it, he was very young and they they recognize that this is a guy that's a worker oh yeah and a respectful guy mm-hmm if jay did he's listening in which he probably is oh yeah You know, but I'll, I'll tell you something. Now think about this. This is just a testament to how great Shane Van Boning plays. Now think about all the tournaments he's won. And how do you like winning five out of ten U.S. Opens with guys like this in the field? Like when Shane's winning these U.S. Opens, like Fetter's in the field, Alcade's in the field, you know. Arcolo, Arcolo was super Joshua good. Phil. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's like these are the guys that Shane is winning five out of ten. So when people talk about who's the greatest, like, I mean, Shane's – Still in my book, the greatest, but. Well, you better have him in I the mean, conversation. I mean, he's in the conversation, Mike. I mean, five out of the last ten years you win the U.S. Open with, with the whole field's full of guys that look like this. Yeah. You know? I'll tell you another thing that happened during that span was that Corey needed to win uh, to get on the Moscone Cup mm -hmm. team, and Shane needed to win to win his fourth Moscone Cup, or uh -huh. fourth uh, U.S. Open. Uh-huh. And it came down Hill Hill, and Corey hadn't been the – the most uh, cordial opponent through the set because he desperately needed to win. Mm -hmm. Shane pocketed a ball, uh, maybe the eight ball, lightly grazed the nine ball with his hand. I was standing there, nobody saw it, and he called the ball himself. That. Heard about I mean, that. Took yeah. himself out of winning mm -hmm. four consecutive. So, wow. Pretty classy guy. So when they say, ah, hey, should he have called the, told Joey Tate that he was shooting the wrong ball? I looked at it. I, I thought, you know what? No, he shouldn't. The reason is because where do you draw the line? If you start telling guys, then no, no, don't bank this. Play right. safe. Like, don't, where do yeah, you, I wouldn't jump this ball. Like, I mean, right, yeah, right. Where do right. you draw the line? And that, then it becomes like, well, you knew you were going to beat him. Why didn't you help him? Like, it, and it's, then, it's not a sportsmanship yeah. thing. And it has nothing to do with the immensity of the moment. It has everything to do with right and wrong. And so I, I tr completely know that Shane's honorable. And I yes. also agree that he made the right decision in that instance. So, Yeah, I mean – I mean, I, I think if Shane was up eight to one or something, he might have. No, it. I don't think he should do it you then. But like at seven seven, like I don't know that I could do it. I mean, like you're trying to like win money too. Like it's not know, about the money; or, it's just about right and wrong. Yeah, that's all. You do it the same yeah, all the time. It's not it your matter. job to coach your opponent. I mean, I know that. And what's happened now? Things get blurred. Now we play all ball fouls right. when they're when they're actual sport should be or uh, cue ball fouls only. The actual sport should be all ball fouls. And there's no conjecture about yeah. move it back, yeah. don't right, move right, it back. Right. Now look, I gotta tell you though, 
I just find it interesting that we just watched possibly the worst set of 10 ball you'll see two world champions ever play, and then maybe the best set of 10 ball on a 5x10 you'll ever see. I mean, back to back. You know, just uh, I didn't see this coming. Look at this break. I mean, Thank yeah. I mean, I mean, Federer's going to like probably break and run out here. What would that be like his fourth out of 11 games yes. or something? Yes. Jeez Louise. Yeah, something else. I mean, this has been the most flawless set of pool I've ever seen. I mean, relative to this table, too. You know, I mean, obviously. Yeah, I'm sure the people at home have really um, got a kick out of what they're seeing. It's fun for a top player because they've all done it. Albin's played sets like this. Kachi's sitting out there. Alcade, they've all done it. But it's still a hoot when you get out there and play just, you know, unbelievable, beat a world-class player 11-1. It's, uh, it's a rare thing. This is a special moment we're seeing here and not something that, you know, any player can produce all the time. And it's not over yet. I, I mean, right. Federer might mess right. up here and before you know it, it's a 10-5 or something. Crazy. Nice, nice judgment there to not try to pull it That's all the right. way back and get easy. That's right. He's going to work a little harder. Mm -hmm. He knows he's going to make the three, but mm -hmm. he's going to work a little harder to get the right position. Here. Right. That was heady. I got to admit, though, for Al Qaeda, he's got to say to himself, like, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I mean, no, there's no shame in no, this. You shake the hand is, and get this, ready to go tomorrow. This sounds crazy, but this is how I like to lose. I don't like losing 11 10. I want to get beat 11 <laughs> to minus one. I do. It's a lot less painful. Now, unless I got to shoot like twice a rack and I yeah. lose 11 1, that sucks. But if somebody plays like this on me, you just get their autograph and go to bed. Hmm. Not with them, but I mean, just, <laughs> well, maybe if they play this good, I don't know. But, but yeah, I mean, this has just been something. Now, he's still got to get from that five to the six. And that's awkward. Yeah, very bit. awkward. Yeah, look at him just get on the rail where he can get to the six correctly. Can he? What is he going to do here? Oh, no, that's kind of a flat angle. You're going to have see, to pound this around. See, this is when some of the players, you know, you get a couple beers in and they're like, yeah, I'd like to go to Moscow and play him some. Like, it's like, <laughs> no, I don't yeah, think, I don't think so. Said that. I don't think I don't. so. <laughs> All right. That's when you know you really are playing amazing when they don't even talk about right. playing you. You know right, what I mean? Right, There's not right. even the discussion of, like, let's go play him some. Is he coming around two cushions? He's going to do something. Oh, he hit it perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He played a little longer, but got on angle. I like that decision. Well, I don't know about you, but I've really, I, my mind is blown. I didn't even know 10 ball could be played at this level on this table. I really didn't. Now, if this had one day old cloth and the ball's right out of the polisher, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe. one in a yeah. million sets could look like this, but yeah. not, not with broken in cloth and just, I mean, ugh. What a shot, dead center. He's got to make one more nice little position shot. And he's got now a how would you the play, wrong angle how here. Would you, would you run through this with right and Ugh. go three rails right to there? That's no. what I like. No? Uh, no. I, oh, oh, would I? You, yeah. you said, I, I said no, but uh, with oh. he, well, I'm what, not, I'm what would you do? Would, would you just try roll to stun it? I would oh. I stun it straight down. Straight down, okay. Oh, he just accepted. Yeah, oh, he's, okay. this looks like ball in hand to him the way he's hitting them. Well, I would have been well. I would have been happy to get here. So if you can get there this way, and you draw this out two rails, no. or would you high left no, it? No, no, I would oh, high okay. left it. I see. Yeah. Okay, but very little left. Okay, I, I don't want much squirt. Well, I just want to make sure I take the side pocket out of there in case I do connect. Well, hopefully, I can use all this info to assassinate you at your house yes, playing ten ball next no year. Be be easy. Well, here we go to complete the most perfect set of pull ever played in the history of mankind. Great job there. <laughs> Look at that, wow. four breaking runs. Wow. <laughs> Better wow. worst. And David, a complete class act. Yeah. Well, Mark, it was a pleasure and an honor, and uh, what a thing we just witnessed wow. there. Yeah, that was a special edition of the uh, AccuStats presentation of World Class Pool. We have to John Schmidt and Mark Wilson. Until next time, so long.